All right, everyone, I'm Mary, and today we're going to jump right back into Big D's Guide to Avoiding Arrest. This is a Hunter the Parenting audio log, and as far as I know, part B, mostly because uh, the night I recorded this, it was a bit stormy, is what I thought until I ended the stream and walked out the door, and my wife was like, hey, by the way, we need to get in the basement because there is a literal tornado. Fuck. Yeah, um, we made it. That said, oh boy, <laughs> I probably should have been recording that night. I should have been hiding in a small cramped space in the basement where it was safe. Yeah, not my brightest moment, but more important things. We're just going to move on and watch more of something that's really fun and completely block out everything that happened previously. Otherwise, you guys know the deal. There's a link below to the original video. Hit it up. And when you're done, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let's get started. My suspicions bright and aroused like an ornery male peacock. So a normal peacock? I flipped through the names. Did Most you actually recognize them? Passingly oh. familiar to me. Ready Hunter with their salt as preparation as even more important than firepower. However, these ones I'd expect were just victims of the Sabbat. No faces I recalled seeing elsewhere. Oh, now that's interesting. Not so much that they're being given victims of the Sabbat, but they're being given victims otherwise. I'm pretty sure that this is either a complete incompetent bundling cop or it's actually a plant. Could be both. Could still be both. But the fact that he's being given faces that he recognizes, but not just the ones that would be the most incriminating to him immediately, is interesting. I don't know what that means. I have more information. Should I mention a name at random? No. Foolish. It could be a trap to invalidate my testimony. And very easy as well. To boo, Granted, I you didn't did, recognize but... all of them. Were some of the others vampires? I struggled. I struggled and struggled. Till by pure chance. What? You found someone? I came across a familiarly unfamiliar face. Pyotor. Yes? Whoa. Sorry, I just, I remember reading that he was in the deep sea welding and all that, but I don't, he was a pretty boy. Okay. Well, that happened. Um, God damn. They, wow. I, I, I heard that. That the Nosferatu really fucked up how someone looks, but it's actually more shocking now. Also, if someone hadn't told me, and by someone I mean literally reading the previous slides they had on the third episode saying he was doing undersea work, I would have had no idea what this was. I thought those were like some kind of weird tentacle fetish get up. It's where I went in my head as soon as I saw all the little what looked like suckers. Ignore my channel mascot. Uh, more importantly, just God. Damn. Cool art, because you could see all the facial features still there. He still had the cheeks and the eyes, the very long hair. He looks so much like himself, but also it's significantly different. It's just, it's... We already saw a shit beard before and after, but now Pyotr is just... I'm sorry. It just... Having the before shot is so surprising right now. I was not expecting it. Wow. Let me take a gander. Um, I think he just marked dead, though. Actually, it's Peter. Peter Piotrowski. He fucked his up his own name. His face was warped. Handsome beyond recognition. Yeah! Poor fellow. No wonder you were such a prick. Yeah. Was he there that night? Yes. Though he had a bandana on for the most part. I recognize the hair, the eyes, the name. The eyes are different, yes. but... Yes. Yes, he was there that night. And with nobody to disprove my story, that should be alibi enough for any Camarilla constabulary. If they're Camarilla, they're not bought out by someone else. Interesting. Especially since, you know, that's the guy who's missing in a weird place, so not around there. you found this man, Peter Piotrowski, and a few others that you do not recognize. Would that be accurate? Yep. Yes. They had formed into a group and approached us in the thicket. They said they just managed to escape some strange captors, begged us for help. 
They didn't go into much detail, but how could we refuse? Little did we know. This is going to sound weird coming from me because I pick out a lot of things, but the part I like the most is this line right here. They didn't go into much detail, but how could we refuse? That is actually a very telling statement about Big D because of two reasons. One, I think he could easily refuse, but I think his natural inclination is to think that the natural inclination is to help, which is actually speaking better on his behalf than anything. Because a lot of people will be like, okay, crazy guys just came running out of the woods saying that they were held captive. A lot of people would run away screaming and do everything they can to GTFO. The fact that he thinks the natural reaction, the story requires him to say, well, of course I would help. Is just to do it. And he said it so naturally. It's not like he was playing it up, but that he was just saying it as a natural part of the story. Be saying anything else would stand out as awkward is actually very telling about his mentality that he's probably a much nicer person, not just the crazed hunter, but actually thinks helping is natural. That's a small thing because he can still be monstrous, but usually the big defining difference between a monster and someone who's just doing monstrous things is what they think is right. A monster doesn't think what they're doing is wrong. A person doing monstrous things is doing them, but knows they're wrong. There's a very small defining line because functionally they'll both still fuck you up. But it does show which side he definitely hasn't fallen on. I don't think he's a monster. And that's the biggest bit of proof right there. He can do a lot of other things. Now, when I say monster, I don't mean actually like a physical, like fae or mummy or like some other type of non-human entity, but like in mentality, he isn't something that is inhuman in how he thinks and how he interacts with the world. It's kind of like the difference between Kevin and Pyotr at the end. Pyotr had a lot of humanity still because I think that's what really pissed him off when it was pointed out. But Kevin was honestly just really chill. And the more he found out, it's like, oh shit, he's actually really interesting. I like this guy. It, just, it was cool. And just this moment right here, you could see what he expects to be human, but it's honestly much nicer than humanity frequently is. And it's just so cool to see that. I don't even think it was intended that way, but it definitely does fit the mentality. Hmm. That sounds pretty incredible. Yes. Yeah. You're totally me. Missing. Did he buy it? Had I already contradicted the family story? Probably. And how many were there? Four. Right. Okay, so just to get this straight, you found four people. Oh, uh, yeah. I love this bit because he's already come to the same realization every single person watching this should know. His story does not match up. And while he's talking about preparations, there's no pre-planned story they're using, which honestly, considering how literally grabbed and bashed in the head he was, would be very surprising if he remembered it. Honestly, the fact that he's even coherent in thinking con... Well, I was going to say conscious thoughts, but I won't go that far. Just coherent thoughts is kind of crazy. Definitely non-human somewhere in there, or something more than human at least. I also love how his eyes are continually shaded, half-lidded. I know I pointed it out before, but it's just, it's such a good visual cue that he's not honest here. There's Walked something in the else. Woods. You thought you recognized them, or at least one of them, from missing persons reports, and you brought them back to your place. Is that all correct? Oh yeah, so far? the other two bodies would be An there. Accurate report, Detective they Sergeant. They have Kevin. Uh, perhaps you should consider a career in court stenography. <laughs> no, <laughs> God, Maybe no. when my legs give in, I'll consider it. Uh, Dude, don't even joke about that. Just don't. Oh God, no. Why would you? Why would you even joke about that? Literally, it's just sitting there and typing what people say constantly in technically an offhand language that isn't really English, but a shorthand they use that you can then retranslate later. So you're not just listening to what once typing, you're listening to what's typing and then retranslate what you say into another form. It's just, I, I just, there are nightmares of becoming an accountant. Yes, that's one of my nightmares. This, I don't think about because it sounds so mindlessly tedious and perfectionary by nature that I, no, just, just don't. Friends don't let friends become stenographers. Smash them in with a pipe wrench if you continue to nail me like this. 
I mean, you already fucked up pretty hard, so... The thing is, he's not even wrong about so much of it, but he missed some things he didn't think about. let me have a think about this. Yeah. Because I have a couple of questions. Um... Damnation. It actually would be hilarious if their reports actually were all lining up by accident. Without doubt told him that bringing them back was an involuntary affair. He is too nice. He agreed with his testimony like oh, this. Oh, Kitten's the one who wanted to it bring them back. It isn't going to be enough. Perhaps I'm but going they were the ones who wanted to do it just to poke around. The lack of collaboration could undo me here. Very easily, yes. It's three against two. There is a clear divergence that cannot be reconciled. Two? Unless... All Who's right, the two? Who's so the three? First off, what happened on the way back to the house? He's moving on? No. Wait. There is an out here. Marcus! What? Marcus, I put my faith in you, son! What? Into your hands, no. I commit my no. spirit! No, no, I didn't... Oh, why, what, just... I don't even know what he's gonna say next. I'm making a point not to read the words, but... You... I don't... Calling it now. Kitten stumbled into having the exact right story, and he's about to fuck it up now. Ideally, though, because he gave a name that wasn't his, and they have his face, like, they could just see it. This is in the 2000s. The internet's around. Unless in World of Darkness, that's different. Which, I don't know if it's not the case. But, in normal times, that would be so easy just to say, okay, he gave us a fake name, so he's lying to us about something. Not unusual, because people do that. But it's so easy to poke holes in it so far. I mean, dear God, as soon as someone lies about their name, you know that either they're just a complete piece of shit, or they're hiding something because they'll get arrested. Is what you normally do. interact with them much, but I know they were a bit weird towards two of us from the beginning. Uh, the father, Dawn, his son, if you know them. Yeah. He's not acknowledging sure. them as his kids. I didn't catch on to it very early, but I think those thugs might have been threatening them from the onset. He, Dor, was the one driving, you see. The rest of us didn't really think about it, or as far as I know, at least. And drive like it was the wacky races off the road into the bushes and everything. It was cr Oh, oh. Sorry, Wacky Races threw me off for a second. It's an old cartoon from, I think, the 70s or 80s. I've actually watched that before, too. It took me a second to remember it, though. Wow. Crazy! You brought all these players in your Buick? Yeah. So you. It no! No, it's not! It's a stupid purchase they made. They are not divine by the things they have purchased. That is literally not a thing. I, why is this a commercial? I, I hate this. I hate everything about this. With this... Oh, people did tell me this is actually the camera. So it is a mix of an onk and a cross. did this correctly. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So, what happened when you got home? Now, this is where I'm surprised because they changed the art style here to make it more open eyes, which is usually shown as being more credulous. Uh, not incredulous, which is doubting, but specifically credulous. The one time I actually speak correctly. So, that's interesting because he's buying it? Because beforehand, a lot of what he said was like, okay, yeah, I trust every word you're saying. And I was like, oh, well, maybe it is. Originally, I was going with the idea that he is kind of just some kind of plant. He's fishing for information and he knows this guy has information. But he's looking for something else. Maybe not to incriminate him specifically, but just to get something else out of it. But now I'm wondering, is this just literally some random yokel? I mean, that would honestly be a surprise to me. Be a good twist even. I mean, Big D's overperforming for something he really didn't need to worry about. Very surprising. Yes! Time. He bought it! Marcus, Did he? Beautiful he just not caring boy. enough? He knows his brother, he knows his nephew, and of course he knows his fiance. Marcus has reconciled this very testimony in much the same way as his father. I'm not the only one in this. We will harmonize these accounts together! Yeah, they probably Sorry, didn't. That's uh, what's convincing me they didn't. Oh, no, 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 yes. no. You never make someone say that. That's oh, no. That's when it all went to hell, of Narratively, course. This, he's too elaborate of a story. This is the harder part. There are many specifics in this part of the story. I realized I was traipsing into a minefield, much like the one on our front lawn. I needed to be specific. Yeah, they still have not lots specific of enough to contradict the other's testimonies. Marcus might be brash, but the lad is a genius. No doubt he'd gone for an approach not dissimilar to my own. One? Wow! I think that's two different episodes where he's being nice to Marcus, unironically. Cool. Two? Oh, no. While I believe everything he said here, and this is probably even correct, 
and honestly is stating more about how they're similar than anything else and is very telling about his relationship there. But more importantly, oh, I have a feeling he's assuming a lot more complicated, I guess, interrogation, apprehension on their part than his own. Who oh, no. knew? Dora, on the other hand, he's precise, calculating, but with the creativity of a sea cucumber. If anyone gave exact information, it would be him. Yeah. My darling. Although he would probably just shut down. Yep. Continued to be his typical friendly and accommodating self, for better or worse. And boy, boy, boy. It's probably the easiest like one. My grandson. I'm sorry. Humana, humana, Brian Cranston. Oh. Oh, yes, Malcolm in the middle. Sorry, let's s stay on topic, though. You invited the missing people into your house. Maybe not his house, either. Then what happened? My presumptions arrayed, I focused on one thing. If this officer was with the Camarilla, he would already know the survivors were vampires. Yep. Because they, I mean, someone definitely knew because they had the person who was previously the sorceress? I actually forgot what her title was, damn it. Oh, shaman, that's what it was. Yeah, the shaman from the fantasy battle episode in TTS. Don't I think she's Camarilla. A lot of people were speculating she's Camarilla, but also, for all I know, it might be something else. Probably Camarilla. Might be something else. I do not know yet. But just, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm just I'm geeking out over this because so much of this writing is getting into Big D's head, and I love it. I love seeing his thought process. I love seeing that he has such great, coherent, linear thoughts. But this is the problem when you have a genius facing a problem that might not be up to their actual talent level. It's like giving one plus one to a bored mathematician who goes out of their way to prove that one plus one does not equal two. Yes, there are ways to do it. They're also stupid nitpicky and don't actually function the way they think. It's literally just something you can say sounds this way because based on one way of looking at it, math doesn't work like you think when you try and convert fractions that are perfect into numbers which have infinity as an actual option it's literally going from one third to 3.33333 and just keep going forever and saying it doesn't actually equal up so they're not actually equal to one which is how you do that mathematical proof but it's stupid because how you fix that is a repetent just upping it by one to immediately cancel out and make it a one it's just part of basic math which even i know so it has to be basic essentially i think he's overplaying his hand but doing it in such a way that he's probably going to succeed. And I love this. Unless it actually is a plant. Or he's just an idiot plant. In which case, it would also be fine. I don't really know. I, I, I just, I'm, I'm going both ways. Sometimes I think he's a plant. Sometimes I think he's actually just trying to get through it and go home. Because I don't want to deal with the guy who has minefields in his yard. Which is probably if a smart the move. case, he'd be looking for the slightest hint that we were aware of that. Which would essentially mark us for death. And then there's a third option. They already know you're aware of it, and they're using you as a monkey's paw. Sorry, things went very fast. At first, we were socializing. They had come in from the cold. I was worried sick about them. It seemed like they had the most incredible story. And eventually, that story proved too good to be true. They mm. had guns. They began threatening us. What kind of guns? I'm not much of a hunter. I couldn't say the exact kind. Not saying a clear about lie, that. By the way, I am actually the best hunter, probably in the world. <laughs> anyway. Oh. There's a. I know it's not meant to be a serious line. He's like best in the world. <laughs> Even the little laugh there. I don't think it doesn't sound patronizing or like he's reflecting on. But he mentioned that with his father and his. Uh, siblings he hunted some of the ancient vampires who when kevin told was told about was very much the oh shit yeah no that's a fucking lie as the natural response and when people in the comments told me just how high up that was also made sense but just does that imply they're dead i don't I just it would imply two things one either they're retired he's a better hunter than them or they're dead and it's happened long enough ago that it doesn't quite pain him anymore. I don't know. I honestly wouldn't go for the last one just because he seems so much more open about his own thought process in his head. I don't think he would have that mental delusion. 
I think it would be represented differently if that was the case. Also, because it would not really work well because it might sound off in a more narrative sense. But that's more of a outside of the context of the story itself and more just an acknowledgement of the author's skill. I don't think that would happen. Or I guess the script writer's skill in this case. But still, it's an interesting thing that if in anything, he does consider himself better than his siblings and his parents or parent. I do not know because he's only mentioned one so far. I believe it was a shotgun. It could have been a rifle. I also think I saw some pistols. And they probably have them in the house anyway, so that's actually not a bad one. I'd be very surprised if they don't have guns in there. Was there anything else? By God, yes. They held us at gunpoint, handed us mines, explosives, and forced us to plant them in our front lawn. To me, bringing the mine view into things was a no-brainer. If anyone mentioned anything, it'd be that. I just had to bring the man to the ground in a way that deflected blame. If he knew about And Marie. where were these explosives found? On the property? On the property? What do you mean? Well, look, I need you to be honest, you know? I need the clearest account possible. And I need to know, where were the explosives from? Were they owned by your friends? No, no! Good heavens, no! How could... Because Dor probably has a record because people have pointed out when he says his good old mine days is probably not referring to being a miner, although mine does sometimes involve explosive as well, but to being a demolition specialist or mine layer and or diffuser. I know there's specific terms for them, but unlike normally where I'm just forgetting it, I actually don't know what they're called. And that's kind of bugging me now that I think about it. Dor probably has a physical record with images of what he looks like. Why would you even say that? Kevin, listen. My family, my good friends, who are like family, that is, and, and I, get fucking held at gunpoint, punched, kicked, and forced into traumatizing labor, including my friend's very small son, who I call my grandson, even though I'm 27 years old. You ask if the mind. Wait, he's playing at being 27? Really? I was going at least 40s. He has a very harsh jawline, and while he doesn't look old, it might, it's probably the gray in the stylistic to give shine as opposed to anything else, but I never thought 20s or 30s. I was going 40s and like very respectable middle-aged. I, I would, wow, he's pretending to be in his 20s. I, I know he's probably well over that, but really, 20s? That's what you picked? That is your cover story? I'm judging him on that one. I mean, it's definitely vanity, but I'm still judging him on that one. Mines were ours? Unless he looked like that at his 20s. My apologies, Kevin. I understand your experience sure. was traumatic. You're right. I'm feeling loads of trauma. I'm a Probably goddamn actual. traumaniac. Probably actual. But as manic as those fuckers. Yeah, debatable. Sorry? The fuckers. Fuckers. Hell's fuckers. Have you heard of them? Oh, oh. Hell's of course. Fuckers. This was the beginning of my counterattack. Oh. As you're no doubt aware, our dearest Bruja and tribute Shitbeard was a member of the fuckers from hell. Are you serious? I, I I'm sorry. The fuckers from hell. This is an in-universe, at least to the Hunter the Parenting version. Group. And of course, it's a motorcycle gang, so it's supposed to be Hell's Angels. But I just... I... I <laughs> the worst part is, I could see someone looking at this going, Yeah, that's a cool name. And then starting their own motorcycle club based off this specific video, because like, yeah, we're the fuckers! Yeah! And then, of course, immediately smashing a bottle against their head. Not a metal one, but specifically a glass one and not understanding why that's a bad idea. And then, you know, probably losing a lot of blood because it's stupid. But more importantly, I just... I want... Oh. I was assuming this was a Hunter the Parenting universe because it was just a silly name. But there's a lot of times where I've been assuming things were Hunter the Parenting specific, but they're actually part of World of Darkness. Is it? 
I honestly don't know if I don't want it to be the case because it's so ridiculous, or I want this to be something actually in World of Darkness because it's so ridiculous, I just want it more. I honestly don't know which side I'm coming down on on this one. I really don't. Oh, wow. Also known as the Tales Fuckers. His jacket claim this at least, and that's all that matters. That county spanning biker brigade is a known Sabbat affiliate. They really? have a pension for embracing bikers, truckers, and other hard men of the road. Easier to get rid of people they who don't have as much connection. Yeah. Violent encounters with Anarch, Camarilla, and law enforcement alike. Were they involved in the incident? Yeah. Right. So, one of them made mention of that. They said to me, "Listen up, you goddamn swamp shrew! Dig the ditch, and if you're lucky, hell's fuckers won't put you in it." Oh my god! Sorry, I, I'm actually just kind of impressed at the vocal range right here. Because that's... It actually sounds like him. The intonation is just a little too deep and resonant. And not nearly breathy or high enough to get the quite same vocal range. But it sounds so much. It's like a really good impersonation of it. And I, it's just... I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> In that same accent? Yes! That's right, an American accent. <laughs> Brrrrs and all. And then he spat on the ground like some kind of errors more often. And you say the mines weren't yours, but theirs. Yes! Yeah, Dor definitely course, claimed them. Of course! I refuse to believe even Dor would have admitted to us owning the mines. Not even son in law is that accommodating. Not even boy is that naive. Marcus did it. I am doubling down on this. Marcus did it. Uh, so, just to clear this up, this is all just some coincidence. Robbery gone wrong? The missing persons you brought home were affiliated with the Hell's Fuckers gang, and they happened to ride home with a former EOD specialist, bringing their own minds. Yeah, this, I love this. It's not just the mild suspicion. But the flat out, I know you're lying. I'm not even going to pretend anymore. Yeah. And that's the confirmation I needed. The door is known because he had a life beforehand. Nice to see it confirmed, though. Damn you! Prepare to die! I wanted to scream that as loud as I could when is he said that. that. The story was beginning to crumble. Door gave me a dress to his EOD suit. Yeah. He must have admitted to owning it. He must have told them of his old fucking mining days, god damn it! Because what you're telling me is that these people showed up, including at least one missing person. The cops on his side, then, isn't he? With mines they supplied themselves. They had you, and especially your friend, a professional in the uh, field, they had him dig up a minefield in your own front lawn. Yep. Could you confirm that as correct in your assessment? Oh, you son of a cheeky dick waffle. I thought he might actually be on his side, but this does confirm my suspicion. I think he's actually not interrogating him, but forcing him into a story that gives him plausible deniability to cover it up. I could still very easily be wrong, but yeah, this does lead more to the idea that he's being used as a monkey's paw. Huh. Well, yes. Uh, a liar would get indignant. If I were telling the truth, I'd get angry. Look here, Steakhead! Steakhead? I can't control what the truth is! Uh, I understand that. I'm sure but... it sounds ridiculous to you, but so did walruses until we had photos of them! To be fair, walruses sound kind of ridiculous after you have photos of them, too. Sake, man, tusks on a manatee. Oh, I am listening, sir. I am. But... I should hope you are, because if you don't believe me, I'll invoke my right to attorney. Which you... he hasn't. I thought that was just a British thing where they didn't do that. He has that right still. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I can understand why he wouldn't, because in circumstance, it makes sense not to get anyone involved. And if you bring an attorney in, I'm almost assuming every attorney is a Carmilla plant. 
Cam Camarilla? Camarilla plant. Yeah, Carmilla is the vampire. It's based on in lore, uh, specifically human lore, not opposed to hunter parenting lore, which is just a, apparently a deviation of the name from what I've been told. You're yeah. free to do. However, in reality, however though, wow. nothing. The facts are clear. No, they're not. They had a whole stash of weapons nearby. A they're fucking yours. stash. Was it just mines? What they found out about Dor's background, they decided to store their arms there. It wasn't a coincidence. It was some kind of sick, spontaneous whimsy on their part. People have done dumber things for that very reason. That's actually very believable. I waited for the response. A sharp repudiation. A resignation that a lawyer was necessary. Or even becoming officially arrested. Oh no, they're getting and way too much information out of you to risk that yet. Oh. Oh. I see. That's rather disconcerting. The fucked up part is, that, that does actually part. happen. You seemed to accept it. This guy's definitely Could a plant a in his favor. They're covering Could have for accepted him. any story, no matter how ridiculous. No. I could see it in his eyes, his hands sweaty, clammy, his eyes glazing over in a sense of internal calculation. Like he's trying to figure out how to make this not sound just crazy. Entertaining me. He was genuinely concerned, which could only mean one thing. I'll make sure that gets to the relevant authorities. This wasn't any normal cop. He was certainly a Camarilla agent. <sighs> I'm sorry you had to go through that. Within his skull, I could already hear the gears turning. Does he think this is a new stage in the Sabbat Crusade? The irony is, technically, he wouldn't be wrong either. Perhaps he's thinking we're cool. Ooh. If the Sabbat Armory had moved in so close, he'd need to alert his masters. You <sighs> probably already know, right. if it is the camera alone. Uh, apologies for my temper flaring. <clears throat> what? Oh, uh, it's uh, quite all right. Tense situation. Weird situation. Also interesting that his first inclination at seeing actual concern was confirmation that he was an agent that's interesting because from the little information i know about ghouls it's that when you're there you become fanatical not just because it feels good but because there's almost a not even an addiction aspect but it's taking addiction a step farther i don't quite know the word that would fit it it's like a step between fanatical and an addiction it i don't is there a word for those? I actually don't know. But it's like right between being a fanatic of choice and belief and something you physically have to do. It's like, or maybe just both at the same time actually works. But it's that. The fact that his idea is that he understands the situation and that's making him sympathetic and actually wanting to help. Not just that he then would go on and tell his masters because it's important, but because he was concerned about them and felt sympathy. Now, this is mostly because I haven't played Vampire the Masquerade, but I heard a lot of the part of that was keeping your humanity as a hallmark of it. Maybe this is an idea of what it looks like from the outside when there's someone who's in it, but hasn't lost themselves yet. And they're just a, well, I guess a ghoul or someone in affiliation and just doing it because I have to, I don't, I don't know, but it's interesting to see that kind of thought process from big D because he's very much anti vampire because Hunter, but also he's acknowledging basic humanity as an aspect of their mental processes being a thing. So he's not, deluded he's not telling himself lies about how they're all inhuman monsters they're just not human monsters which is a small change but a very important one telling yourself something is an inhuman monster is usually a good way to make it so you don't care about their deaths telling something that they're a not human monster is very much a statement of fact like this is not human they are a monster but they have their own minds as opposed to well dehumanization, which I know it doesn't quite work. I know what I'm wanting to say here, and I think most people understand what I mean, but it doesn't quite work because technically they're not actually human, even if some of their mental processes and the ability to regain it through Gondondondala, I cannot speak that word. It's because I forgot it, actually. Just doesn't... Gordonlin? Gordanian? No, that's a different thing altogether. It just... It's so interesting that that was the trigger to convince him. Huh. Especially because in the previous... I guess two previous episodes now, episode two... We saw Dor and Marcus getting into how, no, they aren't. They're just dead. Like, their nose, their voice, they don't have a heart. They're not real people. They're already dead. And that viciousness, acknowledging that there's nothing there. Or Big D is very much looking at someone who he believes is fully in this because he saw that spark of a very human aspect. 
it's so interesting to see his experience is actually making him more accepting of humanity, it seems. Huh. It really is weird. Why commandeer a random house? People also do that as well. I guess it's like they say. You never expect the level of criminality that goes entirely unaccounted for outside of cities. But... People do uh, that, though. That's a thing. It's fine. Oh, well, not really, but... Was there anything else? Did you happen to overhear anything? Oh. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, there is something! That man, the one with the drawl? The American? Yes, him. I heard him mention there was a dispute with some rival gang. Oh, yeah, I forgot like for a, a second. Uh, and, an anarchist oh. gang? That's American That accent. should get the spot. Uh, hmm. Did they say anything about that gang? And this they would most the likely be luring them to our house. Hence, you know, the minefield. And we just did it, of course, hoping we'd be spared. But then, just before dawn, more bikers showed up and they just... Oh, now he's pushing a little further. ...drove off with them. After that, the alarm finally went off and called the police. But, uh, I don't know. Perhaps they were expecting that. Don't worry about that, sir. We'll body. take it from here. Thank goodness. That's a load off my shoulders. Hmm. I'm sure. Just a few more questions, if you don't mind. Go right ahead! Okay, first off, Speaker D, Alpha Busa, you glorious motherfuckers. This scripting is amazing. I mean, holy shit! I am being drawn into this on an almost visceral level because I absolutely love trying to figure out what are the interplays here, who is representing which side. It's a basic social deduction game in a freaking narrative! I'm loving this! I, I just love every second of this. I love seeing what is cluing him in. Because not only are we getting to deduce whose side is the cop on, how is this interacting with them, what forces are active here, but we're also seeing how Big D thinks about them and showing more of his worldview by comparison to his sons and what they do with less information, which he's granted not giving them on purpose because if they had talked about it the wrong place, they would do something stupid. As opposed to not being given information and then doing something stupid like uh, feeding a vampire to other vampires. Makes sense, but also it just... It, Gah! I love this. I'm not even a big fan of social deductions, mostly because I suck at them. But seeing this right here and seeing it so well done, I... I'm always impressed by people who can write complicated narratives that make sense, that show emotion, show drama, but show that there are wheels within wheels without telling someone directly that here's the plan, here's the side plan. Big D's kind of doing that with his thoughts and then what he's physically saying. But we're also seeing the implications of other plans that we know have to be there because we're seeing everything else. I love this. And then there's still that part of me that thinks maybe this is just a random good cop who's maybe not good at his job, but also is aware enough to know one of the DOD specialists is. And two, they just might actually care. I don't know. It would be funny as hell, but also... I. It, I can't rule it out. I don't think it's the most likely option, but I just don't know. And I love this. So much of this is just really damn good writing. Because whenever you make something complicated, it's so easy to overcomplicate something. The biggest problem with writing, when you try to do something super complicated, is writing beyond your ability to understand what you're writing. It's so easy to fuck it up because you miss so many things that way. This still makes sense. They're not moving beyond their capabilities. They're still writing things that are good. I just... God damn it, I love this! I think I actually like the writing of this better than the third episode. It's just... I'm excited here. The best thing I can think about this is... This is like the climax, the highest moment of tension in the first Jaws movie. Which I don't believe was the shark, but was that moment where they talked about what brought them there. And you just got exposition that was dramatic and gripping. And I just... It's so damn good! Uh, and it occurs to me after mentioning that, that the shark thing, and then we're literally dealing with vampires and this, this conversation around that, it makes sense. Yeah, actually, it's a pretty good metaphor now I think about it. Completely intentional, yeah. Uh, not completely accidental, but works out. Just, god damn! <sighs> so as you can tell, I really enjoy this episode. If you haven't already, link below, original video, hit it up. And when you're done, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.